Hello and welcome back. If you're watching this, it means you're in your championship, so congratulations on making it this far, but the fight isn't over yet. This week is a combination that spans 12 days with some very heavy days, or nights I should say, and a zero game Friday night. Uh, and then on top of that, a lot of insanity that occurred last week that probably impacted you and your team and got you to this point. Um, today's weekly video will be a little bit different because we're going to look at the schedule in detail. Uh, you're only going to have four waiver ads in most league formats for 12 days. So playing the schedule will take on an added importance as you try to win your league this week. Now, let's take a look at the games played this week. So there is these two makeup games that they've added for Friday the 14th. Colorado, uh, Nashville, Buffalo, Columbus. So those are all plus ones up here, which means that four teams play seven games. So uh, that will be a little bit more important, but there are a number of caveats to that because there's a number of heavy nights. So this week goes from April 3rd until April 14th. Um, the Islanders, the only team with four games, and this will impact you. So if you own a guy like Ilya Sorokin, uh, you will need to plan for that, especially as the Isles get closer to clinching a playoff spot, because once they do, I'd imagine Varlamov will get some starts to rest Sorokin for the playoffs. You could potentially target Varlamov for a spot start or something to that effect, but I wouldn't necessarily pick up Varlamov if he's only going to get two games or, or you know, maybe if that. Um, they might start Sorokin too. They might give Varlamov a little bit more depending on how things play out this week. Uh, also worth noting that the Bruins have been resting players uh, Mitch Marner was rested today for Toronto, uh, McAvoy, uh, Bergeron, some of those big name guys on Boston are rested now. I would imagine they won't rest those guys in the back half of next week's schedule because they're going to want to gear up for playoffs. But for right now, that is impacting a lot of fantasy matchups, so it is something to keep an eye on. And this goes back to that bubble team bonus I talked about in the preseason that you're going to want players... Uh, specifically goaltenders, but in this case, it's also players that are playing for something down the stretch because you don't want your best players, uh, you know, being sat on a day like today. I have Patrice Bergeron in my face-off league. He's been sat yesterday and today, and because of that, I'm likely going to lose. So uh, the bubble team bonus in full effect right now. Now, this past week, every one of my ads laid an egg. Almost all of my advice fell flat until Saturday. Uh, and the overall trends were that teams that are the heavy favorites in their matchups ended up losing or squeaking by. But for fantasy purposes, the big value seemed to be in some of the players on worse teams that were getting an elevated opportunity or players in matchups that had meaning or you know potential playoff previews, wild card teams trying to get in, etc. You want to find guys that are playing for something down the stretch, not guys that are just kind of running out the schedule and uh, booking their flights for their vacation once the season's over. So this is where our focus should be for championship week, finding games that matter and finding some younger players on teams that are out of it but still playing for roster spots next year. Philly should be uh, you know, still playing to the final buzzer for Tortorella. He's one of those guys that's not going to let them take it easy. Uh, San Jose ended their losing streak. Noah Gregor with a hat trick the other night. Um, Henry Thrun make, making his debut as well. Um, a number of younger players, a bunch of those guys that I've never seen before, uh, having an impact and a huge win in Arizona the other night. Devin Levi got a start, his first NHL win. Um, I'd look for him to get some starts down the stretch. But before we take a look at players, uh, let's take a look at the schedules, the best schedules this week. And we'll start where we looked at it uh, in the early playoff preview video. This is what you saw, only uh, Buffalo has been added to this. They were the other team that I missed uh, in that video. You have Seattle, Colorado, Nashville, Buffalo. They all play seven times. Not only do the Kraken play seven times, but five of these games are against non-playoff teams. So that's good and bad. It's good that they're playing lesser opponents that could potentially produce more offense because they're terrible defensively. But it also could be bad because there's no incentive for them to play hard until you get to this Tuesday game and then this Thursday game. These are going to be playoff previews, maybe not a matchup in the first round, but uh, these games are going to have some significance. The rest of them might not. So this will be an interesting schedule to look at, and there's a number of players you can add from Seattle. We'll take a look at that in tomorrow's video. I'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> On top of that, uh, they'll have to use both goaltenders because they do have two back-to-backs here on Monday, Tuesday, and here on Monday, Tuesday as well. 
uh, and we'll get to that in the goaltending section of this video. So some uh, some interesting uh, you know movement that you can find in Seattle to potentially find some value in this week. The next best schedule is the Avalanche, who also play seven games. They have at least three games against non-playoff teams. There is a road back-to-back in LA and Anaheim, but the travel is minimal, so they should be able to perform in that second game against the Ducks. The Ducks have been hemorrhaging goals. I believe they've been outscored 30 to 9 in their last seven games. They just don't have it right now. Um, and then on top of that, Colorado plays uh, five of seven on the road, and they also have a back to back at the end at home versus Winnipeg and then traveling to Nashville to close out the regular season. That may be a little bit difficult, but the Avs may be playing meaningful hockey down the stretch because things are not locked up right now in the central. So they have something to play for. They're going to potentially push for home ice. Uh, and they're going to want to you know, continue to push uh, and try to make a dent in trying to get that home ice because they have a, a number of guys that have been injured all season that are healthy now, and they're not too burned out. Um, so unlike Boston, who's played uh, incredible hockey all season long and relied on their top players, McCarr has been in and out of the lineup. A bunch of their other guys have been in and out of the lineup. So they're a little bit more fresh than uh, some of those Boston guys. Uh, they're probably going to use both Georgiev and Francouz if he's healthy this week, so you can target them. We'll get to that in the goaltending part of this section uh, section of this video. Uh, and then up next, we have Nashville. Nashville, uh, a back-to-back on Monday, Tuesday. That will come in handy as well, as we'll see in a minute. And they have a back-to-back here Thursday, Friday. So there's uh, opportunities for Lankanen to get a couple starts here. Um, that could be something to target, especially since they're, uh, you know, this Monday game will probably, I would imagine, be Saros, although these are both difficult matchups, so maybe they'll keep Saros for the second night of the back-to-back, but um, this uh, Monday, Tuesday, this is a light night Monday, and this is a light night Friday, so that could potentially come in handy uh, if you want to pick up Kevin Lankinen if he's playing those nights. Um, on top of all that, they do have some travel uh, in the middle of the week, but uh, they do have three home games, so it's or four home games. It's not the end of the world that they have some travel here, but they do have to play Winnipeg and Calgary. Those two teams should be playing for something in these games. Uh, Winnipeg trying to hold down that wild card spot and Calgary trying to fight their way back in. They have a difficult game here against uh, Carolina, so that should, and these two games are not easy either at the back end of the schedule, but they are still technically in a playoff spot, or not in a playoff spot, they're in a playoff push. They could make a push for the playoffs, but they have to perform well during this stretch. And so I would imagine Soros gets five starts this week. Uh, so that will help me. I own Soros. Uh, and some of the other teams that I have, uh, the goaltenders that I have, Corpus Allo is only going to get two or three starts. So I do have to kind of pay attention uh, and hope that Saros does a really good job here in this stretch of games. Then you have Buffalo down here. Uh, a lot of these are heavy night games. Um, in fact, the only light night game, I believe, is this Friday, as I'm looking at it right now. Uh, these two, Monday and Tuesday of next week, are still heavy. There's no light night. Usually Monday is light, but this not this is not a light night. This is a 12 game uh, schedule on Monday, so um, it's going to be difficult to add Buffalo Sabers. Uh, but it is worth noting that they have four games in the last five days of the schedule, uh, and there is a little schedule play that we will get to. Uh, we'll just get to it now. So, if you're looking to maximize the schedule, Anaheim is the only team with two off night games in the first half of the week. They have two difficult matchups, but that may bring out their best. And for fantasy, who cares if they lose? You shouldn't start Gibson either of those games anyway because they're playing Anaheim and Colorado. Um, but they do have two uh, off-night games on Wednesday and Sunday, so that could factor into your decision-making for the first half of the week. Uh, on top of that, these are the rest of the teams that have off-night games in the first half of the week. The Kraken play Monday, but you're likely looking at uh, volume for them because they do play seven times in the next couple of days. Uh, you have a couple of other teams that play Monday. Arizona plays Monday. Dallas, Minnesota, Nashville, Seattle, uh, Vegas. They all play this Monday night schedule, and that could come in handy because of, uh, we'll look at it in the next slide, that you can potentially add uh, up to four games with three roster moves, but that is going to take a lot of your roster flexibility out. Um, but nonetheless, these are the off night games. This is where you're going to want to add some players because it's going to be very difficult to add a player, uh, that gets in on the heavier nights. You have a ton of roster decisions to make on your own with all the, the scheduling going on and the Tuesday, Thursday matchups, etc. Uh, the following Monday, Tuesday, uh, all these heavy night games or heavy games, ha, heavy nights for games. 
uh, are going to uh, be very challenging for your waiver ads. So you're going to want to target off night games. Uh, and this is basically all of them in the first half. Now, Anaheim has these two difficult matchups. But if you wanted to add somebody from Anaheim, maybe a Frankie Vitrano for some shot volume, uh, maybe Cam Fowler for a defensive ad, something to that effect, uh, these would be where you can find some value. For the second half of the week, these are the light nights, the Friday, April 12th, and I'm sorry, the Friday, April 14th, and the Wednesday, April 12th. Um, the Islanders, they only play four times in this entire span. They only have one off night game, and this is it. It is pretty favorable. So if you need a spot start out of an Islander, this would be the only time you would want to add them. Um, Dallas has this off night game. They also play the off night on the, the first Monday. So they have the, the first Monday of the week and then the second Wednesday. Uh, Calgary has both Wednesday night games, two off nights. This one against the Sharks could see a lot of offense, so you might want to think about targeting guys like Mangiapane, Coleman, Backlin, um, anybody that you can find from the Flames that would potentially put up some offensive categories for you, um, shots, goals, things of that nature, because the Sharks have been bleeding a lot of goals, and uh, they have been a little bit more competitive over the past couple of days, but they were uh, on a nine-game losing streak just before that, so they haven't been at their best lately. Uh, until the last game. They did whoop the Arizona Coyotes on the weekend, uh, so it is slightly improving, but they are getting a lot of younger players into the lineup. That could mean a lot of mistakes and a lot of offense the other way. So for the front half best schedule is Anaheim. We mentioned that before with two, a Wednesday and Sunday. Washington has no off nights and only two games uh, in the front half. And then in this back half, these are the only off night games uh, in general. So you have Dallas with two off night games total Monday and the second Wednesday. They have six total games on the week. Calgary has two off night games, but only five total games. So make of that what you will. Now, you could potentially target Ducks for the first half of the week and then maybe add some Sabres for the second half because they play four games and five nights. Uh, or you could pick up Dallas or Calgary players who will also play two off nights over the course of the 12 days. Uh, and you would probably hold on to them for the entire week just in case. But for max game volume, uh, it will take some ads. You will probably uh, get uh, four ads over the 12 days, which will be very difficult. But what you could do, you could pick up a Kraken player. They play Monday and Tuesday. If you can fit them in on Tuesday, you get two games out of a Kraken player. Then you drop them, though you will be missing out on the total seven-game volume from the, uh, the Kraken. But you drop them for a Ducks player who will then play Wednesday off night and Sunday off night. Then you drop them and add a flame for the final Wednesday. So this will result in you getting four games on off nights uh, but you have to use three waiver ads to complete this ridiculous streaming sequence. So if you do this, I highly recommend saving that last ad for the end of the week to try to balance out, see where you're low and try to, you know, add one player. Maybe on this Friday, uh, one of these matchups, you could potentially find somebody on maybe the Preds, Blue Jackets that you can find that could potentially push you over the top because using those three ads to just get four games of volume is tough. Um, but if you need to, if you have no uh, roster flexibility on any of the difficult, uh, you know, the heavier nights, you might have to do something like this where you're getting max game volume on the off nights. So just something to think about. Thought I'd mention that uh, before we continue. Now let's look at some of the worst schedules uh, for championship week. Obviously the Islanders, uh, this is a massively heavy Thursday and Saturday uh, this is not a great matchup, although it might bring out the best in the Islanders as they have to ramp it up for the playoffs. Uh, this will be a, a game that you might not even get your Isles into the lineup with 16 games going on, every team playing on this Saturday. They have Washington on Monday. That is a heavy schedule. Uh, and then they do have this nice uh, off-night game against Montreal. That could be the only place where you're going to want to add some Isles. You have Columbus here. They have some very difficult matchups in the front half. Toronto, Devils, Rangers, that's very difficult. Uh, but maybe you get the phenomenon that we had last week where the, the good teams are taking Columbus lightly and maybe uh, they can keep it close the way that they did against Boston. Um, then you have this heavy night uh, against Philly. And then the back-to-back -to, -back to close out the season, uh, home against Pittsburgh and home against Buffalo. So uh, maybe you could look at these last couple of days to potentially add a, a blue jacket again this this final game of the season that could be the spot to uh, pick up a Marchenko or uh, Kent Johnson somebody to that effect uh, maybe Boone Jenner if he's available for you he would be the most complete player for sure 
For Montreal, they play these heavy nights as well. They have a back-to-back on Long Island on that off night, but then they go straight into the Lions' den in Boston on Thursday, which is very heavy. I wouldn't be looking to add Montreal Canadiens for this week. A five-game schedule with one back-to-back with some travel involved, and they do play uh, three potential playoff teams, Toronto, the Islanders, and Boston. Uh, Washington, they're kind of, they're not, they haven't fallen off a cliff yet, but they're not necessarily uh, playing their best hockey. Red Wings have been known to play spoiler down the stretch here lately, so they, uh, they beat Pittsburgh in a game that Pittsburgh desperately needed, so this could be a difficult game. Uh, but these are all heavy nights except for this Wednesday, so that's not necessarily the best schedule if you own any Habs. Uh, Matheson was a guy I picked up. I might have to drop him. And then the Sens, they have a gauntlet here. So they have... Um, Two road games, Carolina and Florida. Florida pushing for a playoff spot. That's going to bring out their best. Then they're home against Tampa Bay. That's not going to be easy. Then home against Carolina. All of these are on heavy nights. So most of these guys, you know, if you own any of the the top six that you're you're obviously going to want to keep in your lineup, they're going to be in. But these are very difficult matchups that might bring out their best, but it also might uh, not leave a lot of room for goal scoring, especially against Carolina, who's a very good defensive team. And then they have this road game on a very heavy Thursday against Buffalo. So that's not necessarily ideal. Uh, And these are the teams that I would stay away from in terms of adding players from those teams because uh, they're probably not going to get in your lineup. If you own these guys already, uh, you know, maybe the Canadians, the Blue Jackets and the Isles, I would drop. I'd probably keep uh, some of the better, you know, the top six forwards on Ottawa on my lineup because they're they're still going to play. Uh, and they're still going to get their cookies on the power play and whatnot. But just something to keep in mind as you navigate the schedule this week. Now, we're going to jump to goaltending to end the video. If you need players to look at for next week, I'll do a deeper dive on players in tomorrow's video because chances are if you're in your finals, you know what you're doing, and you don't need me to hold your hand as much. So we'll focus on goaltending here and look at the players tomorrow. Uh, Also worth noting that if you're watching this on Sunday night, you probably still have some competitions going on uh, the, the games won't wrap up until about 1030 Eastern time today. So you might want to focus on that before uh, starting to think about next week. So that's what we'll do. Uh, we'll think about next week tomorrow with the player ads. And now let's turn to the goaltending streamers that you can pick up for week 25, 26. Now, before we get into names uh, strategically, I would be planning to save at least one of your ads for a goaltender. Uh, some starters will be sitting or you know resting for playoffs. Uh, Some teams only play five games, and if they're running a 1A, 1B situation, then you'll only get two or three games out of them over the 12 days. Uh, So I would plan to save an ad for goaltending volume before you begin your week. So that may impact uh, your thought process if you were thinking about that max volume strategy that I laid out earlier. But up first, we have Pavel Francouz. He's currently out with a lower body injury. He's 21% owned, uh, only 15 starts this year. They'll want to get him some games before playoffs if he's healthy. Um, Georgiev only has one or two playoff games in his career. Last year, Francois had six playoff wins. So uh, that could potentially be something to factor in uh, down the stretch for Jared Bednar to try to get Francois in, get him a little bit more acclimated. He's been riddled with injuries this year, so they're going to want to get him some starts if he's healthy. They have uh, seven games next week, two off nights, and two back-to-backs. So they'll have to use their backup at least twice in that span, whoever it is. Now, if it's not Fransos, it will probably be Jonas Johansson. He's had three starts this year, two wins, a 210 goals against, and a 932 save percentage. He's been really good in a small sample size. It depends on the matchup for me, uh, but their back-to-backs are at LA Saturday, at Anaheim Sunday. That would be pretty favorable. And then versus Winnipeg at home on the 13th, and then at Nashville on the final day of the season, a back-to-back with travel involved. Uh, A little bit more difficult, but they'll likely want to enter the playoffs playing their best. So I would expect a good effort from the Avs in general for those games. So those would be some targets. Uh, Obviously, the Avs play seven times, so you're going to want to target their backup goaltender. Um, If you can't get one of those two guys, or if you're maybe a little bit on the fence about adding one of those guys, especially with that second back-to-back, uh, Colin Delia, 6% owned. He's been playing really well lately. He hasn't been getting a lot of starts. Vancouver does have six games next week. There's only one back-to-back, I believe. Uh, but in his last two starts, two wins, a 1.5 goals against, and a 939 save percentage. 
Now, I don't think they'll need to rest Demko because Demko is not going to the playoffs and he's missed a ton of time due to injury. But if Delia is going to get in any games, he's been relatively strong and Rick Tockett's defensive system seems to be helping him out a little bit as well as these two starts have come since the coaching change and he's been uh, stellar in both of those games. So 6% owned. If uh, if you're in a deeper league, maybe Delia is a target for you. Uh, it is a little bit difficult if you're trying to add volume. He's maybe not going to get the most volume, but I, I prefer quality starts, especially in a categories league uh, over quantity. Uh, up next, we have Devin Levi, 2% owned. So he's a really deep league play. Uh, Anderson has an upper body injury, so he may or may not get in. They have four goalies on their roster right now. If you look at the other ones, UPL or 6K, whatever you want to call them, he's got a 3.61 goals against and an 891 save percentage on the season. Eric Comrie has a 367 goals against and an 886 save percentage. Although he did have uh, two games last week, a 145 goals against and a 955 save percentage with a shutout. So maybe Comrie is the other target for you. Uh, if you're thinking about those four games and five nights at the back end of the schedule, uh, Levi would be getting a couple of those, I would imagine, and maybe Comrie gets the other ones. So you could target either of those two guys. Uh, Buffalo has the seven games, as, as we mentioned before, four of those in the final five days with two back-to-backs at New York, at New Jersey. Those are not easy games. Then at home versus Ottawa, and then uh, away against Columbus to end the season. So... They'll have to use at least two goalies, if not three, but I'd imagine they'll want to see what they have in Devin Levi, maybe give him three or four of the seven starts. Uh, but Buffalo isn't the best defensive team, so this is more of a desperation play uh, if you have Sorokin and you need some start volume. But Levi has been historically good in the NCAA. He got his first win against the Rangers the other night, and he's only 2% owned, so he's probably there for you. Now, if you like uh, the better team option, as I do, Mackenzie Blackwood, 10% owned. Uh, the Devils defensively are giving up more goals over the last few weeks than earlier in the season. They're still a good defensive team, though. Blackwood is back. He's healthy, uh, low ownership, and Lindy Ruff said he's going to get in some games to try to get him up to speed before playoffs just in case something happens to Vanacek. So uh, the Devils only have five games, so figure maybe two for Blackwood. Uh, his save percentage isn't great on the season, 897, um, but I'd prefer to have a few starts from a goalie on a good defensive team than one more start, maybe three starts uh, from a guy who's on a bad defensive team. So that's more category league specific, uh, but since the All-Star break, 4-1, 262 goals against, and a 906 save percentage, uh, so a little bit better than his season-long average. Uh, and again, the Devils are a really good team. They're uh, over 100 points already. They're pushing for top spot in the Metro, so they do have something to play for. So that could be a really nice uh, pickup if you can get Blackwood. He's only 10% owned. Now, up next, we have the exact opposite, Sam Montembeau. He's a much more skilled goaltender. Uh, you can see 12.7 goals saved above expected. That's 14th in the league. Um, He's been a bit stronger than some of the other bottom feeders out there in terms of uh, what he's provided for Montreal and what Montreal has been doing in the schedule. So they're chipping off some wins. They're being competitive in some of these games. They are still a really bad defensive team. They're giving up a ton of uh, turnovers in their own end. Um, but they do have uh, five games, one of them an off night and one of them a back-to-back. -back. So figure maybe three or four starts for Montembeau. Uh, and he's only 12% owned, so he's probably there for you in most leagues. But this is probably the best ad of the week, if you can get him. Antti Ranta, he's won his last eight games. Uh, he has been banged up. He missed some time. Kachetkov was brought up, uh, but he's been back. He just posted a shutout on Saturday. He's more than likely your most reliable option. Carolina has six games, zero off nights, one back-to-back, -back, so he'll get a minimum of one start. Uh, but it is worth noting that if anything happens to Anderson or Ranta during this week, you should be looking at your waiver wire and snatching up Kachetkov because whoever's in net for Carolina is a really good fantasy play. But there are two more goalies that I didn't mention because they deserve their own discussion. Grubauer and Jones. So this is, uh, if you're in need of volume and you saw the crack in schedule, you look at their goalie ownership, maybe you're interested in one of either Jones or Grubauer. Uh, but over the last month, Grubauer, nine starts, five wins, 305 goals against, but a really bad 872 save percentage. Uh, then you compare that with Martin Jones, five starts, only one win, 312 goals against, 865 save percentage is even worse somehow. 
Um, so really not good in terms of the goaltending for Seattle. That's going to be an issue. They've spent a decent amount of money on their goaltending coming out of the expansion draft, and it just has not worked out. Uh, there was a period earlier in the season where Jones was ownable. Uh, but if you look at their goalie hubs, they're both pretty dismal. 48 for Jones, 44 for Grubauer. Grubauer just has not returned to form. Uh, he was a 920 uh, save percentage goaltender everywhere else he's been except for Seattle. Uh, so for whatever reason, he's just not doing well in Seattle. But the reason for that might be uh, one of the phenomenon that I've kind of danced around a little bit. I've talked about it in spurts. At the beginning of the season, I said you wanted a team that doesn't give up a ton of shots. So that's what the Kraken are. They've in, Over the last 10 games, they've given up 23.9 shots against per game. They're 4-4-2 four, four, and two in their last 10, but they're giving up 3.2 goals against, which means they're not giving up a ton of shots, but they're still giving up at least three goals a game. So that's killing the save percentage of both of these guys. So this is one of those situations where maybe you'd prefer uh, a team that gives up a little bit more shot volume, but from the outside. Uh, as opposed to the Kraken who just shut everything down and then there's two or three goals per game that squeak in and that destroys their save percentage and kind of hurts their goals against as well. Uh, so this is worth noting because I'm sure you're looking at these guys to potentially add them for the week. You can see Jones, negative 6.2 goals saved above expected. Grubauer, a little bit better, minus 2.7. Um, but both of them are really struggling. These stats are from uh, the 30th was the last time I updated them, which is why they're a little bit different from here. But nonetheless, they're not great fantasy options, but they will get you volume and they'll probably get you wins, which you can see here, 81st percentile in wins for Jones, uh, 53rd for Grubauer, but he did miss a bunch of time earlier in the year and Jones was the, the 1A uh, at that point in the season. So Grubauer has taken the net for the most part over the last month. Uh, as you can see here, five wins and nine starts. So he's a little bit more reliable that way. And he's a little bit more ownable at 29%. Uh, but it is worth just mentioning this and trying to give you all the, the stats that you need before you add these guys, because they are probably not going to be giving you save percentage. They're probably not great for a category league where uh, a bad game or bad save percentage is going to destroy your category coverage for that week. So maybe in a points league, you would look to these guys to add just for the wins uh, and a potential shutout if they're you know not going to give up a ton of shots and they're playing a weaker opponent. Um, but in category leagues, I would probably steer clear of these two guys and go for one of the other guys that we just mentioned. But that's going to do it for this video. Uh, just remember to stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Usually we look at the top performers from last week. I'll probably do something like that, but we'll also look at some of the top targets for next week. Don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm in a couple of very tight matchups today. Uh, I don't want to put the cart before the horse and start looking forward to next week. Uh, and again, if you're in the same position, you should probably also focus tonight uh, and then come back tomorrow morning when I'll be updating with the Players of the Week video. But that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for paying attention for the entire season. I appreciate all of your support to this point. If you're still watching, thank you very much for that. Uh, and as I mentioned again, I'll see you tomorrow.